Okay. Are you rolling? Mm-hmm. And then you could touch my face in the, the screen to focus. Good? Okay. Hey, what's up street gods? Eric from the Eric from Street Photography Blog. So I wanted to do some trial photography tips for you to just give you some practical suggestions. So Anna, ask me a question. All right, so we're gonna do some on the fly interviews with Eric uh -huh. about his experiences with traveling. Yep. So question one, mm -hmm. what one advice would you give to yourself before you started traveling? Okay, so probably the best advice I'd give myself before traveling is travel with a laptop. This is actually kind of a practical piece of advice is that a lot of people want to travel to, you know, have nice experiences to reflect and so forth, which is really important. But I think it's so essential to travel with a laptop because when you travel with a laptop, you have the ultimate content creation device. So you could blog about your experiences, you could process your photos, and you could also send emails back home. And I think it's really important while you're on the road to create and record and document and reflect while it's still fresh in your mind because often what happens is you have an amazing travel trip and then you go back home and then it's easy to lapse back into school or real life and you kind of forget everything you experienced that you found meaningful. So, you know, just travel with the cheapest laptop, the lightest laptop. If you wanted to buy a new laptop, just get a used 11 inch MacBook Air, 13 inch MacBook Air, or if you have the money. I personally travel with the 13 inch MacBook Pro uh, Retina touchpad, uh, touch, touch bar. And also, you know, just another practical tip is merino wool everything. The biggest issue is when a lot of people are traveling, they carry way too many clothes. I just have two black merino wool shirts, just get them on Amazon and also leggings and socks and ex officio boxers, boxer briefs, these are clutch. And yeah, every single evening, just wash your clothes in the sink and when in doubt, just travel light. So even now, I only travel with one backpack, I think Tank Perception, in the past it was a 15, now it's a Think Tank Perception Pro. And by having just one carry-on luggage, you don't have to wait in for your luggage and the lighter your stuff is, the more you're gonna enjoy your travels because you're gonna be able to explore more with less fatigue. All right, awesome. So you said um, your top recommended advice is to bring a laptop, yeah. but also to travel as light as possible. Yeah. So why would you recommend a laptop over for your creation device, say over your smartphone? That's actually a very good question. So to be honest, a smartphone could be totally fine. Let's say you have an iPhone. You could actually get an SD to lightning adapter, which allows you to transfer photos from your digital camera to your phone. And yeah, it could be a really good way for you to process your photos and to share them quickly and also to reflect about your experiences. But I still feel that the issue with the phone is it's too easy to get distracted on a phone. And I think with a laptop, it forces you to be more focused. And also there's just so much more you could do in terms of multitasking, in terms of using different programs like Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop, iMovie, GarageBand, and so forth. And I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, when you're traveling, spending your time just sightseeing, but also spending time in coffee shops for you to use this opportunity to quickly and more effectively look through your photos. I've tried so many different editing um, softwares out there and different solutions, like using an iPad, using a phone, but I still find that using a laptop in Lightroom is the quickest way to look through your photos. All right, awesome. Um, next question. What is something that you learned through travel that you would have not learned if it wasn't for you traveling? Oh, that's an excellent question. So for me, this is like a Zen Taoist Buddhist philosophy I believe in is this concept of direct experience. So the basic idea of direct experience is that believe half of what you hear, believe nothing of what you read and hear, believe three fourths of what you see. I'm just totally butchering the saying, but essentially the concept is Traveling has helped me become less ignorant. It's helped me become more empathetic and more open-minded to the rest of the world. So I'm Korean, Asian American, and I was born in the States. And a lot of Americans are really afraid of Middle Easterns. And actually the first trip I ever did was in 2011, uh, thanks to Lauren and uh, you know, Mohammed from Beirut, Lebanon. They invited me to Beirut, Lebanon to do a workshop. And all my friends were like, oh my gosh, you can go to Beirut, Lebanon, it's the Middle East, you can get terrorized, blah, blah, blah. And then like, you know, even me, before I went there, I was just, like expecting everyone to wear just white robes and stuff. And then Mohammed picks me up at the airport. It's like, you know, he rolls up to the airport, picks me up. 
And then I see this guy, Mohammed, Gucci suit, hair slick back, you know, Rolex. I'm probably making that up, but he's driving like a huge GMC SUV. And I'm like, are you Mohammed? He's like, yeah, I'm Mohammed. Hopping in. It was such an amazing experience because his mother, beautiful Lebanese woman, she was saying in Lebanese, like, oh, ask Eric if he has a girlfriend or wife. He's like, oh, Eric, do you have a girlfriend or wife? And at the time I had a girlfriend, I said, oh, you know, I have a girlfriend. He's like, forget your girlfriend. Move to Beirut, we'll find you a beautiful Lebanese wife and set you up. So like, I really felt like so much at home and it was so surprising for me because I was essentially trained to be afraid of Middle Easterners or people from the Middle East. And so it's actually helped me realize as I've traveled throughout the world that of course there's different cultures and customs, but ultimately all humanity, I think we're more similar than dissimilar in the sense that we care about friends, family, loved ones. We love to share experiences. We love to laugh, we like to hug. And so the world has actually become a less scary place. All right, um, third question. So what is the top location you would recommend somebody to go to travel for photography that may be not financially secure, that they can just go all out? but still have a great experience while trying to be budget friendly? Oh, so that's a really good question. So traveling on a budget, I honestly think the best place to travel on a budget is probably Vietnam. I mean, the issue though is flying here is a little more expensive. So I'll just give some practical recommendations. So first of all, if you're an American, Mexico City is the place to go. It's super close, especially if you live in California or even if you're on the East Coast, you stay in the States. Mexico City has some of the best food, some of the friendliest people, and you know, there's no drug cartels in Mexico City. Super safe, there's like a Nespresso store and there's all these fancy stuff. Great internet connection, amazing food, and the people are just so warm and friendly and just so many great colors, great for photography. So Mexico City would be a huge recommendation. If you do have the opportunity, if you want to travel. So the issue is, if you come to Vietnam, the flight to Vietnam might cost you like, anywhere between $600 and maybe $1,000. So getting here is a little more expensive, but once you're here, it's like super cheap. Like you could even stay at a hostel in probably Saigon or Hanoi for 10 bucks a night, maybe even less. Even right now we're staying at a pretty nice hotel and it's probably like 25 bucks a night, just hotels.com. And the great thing with being in Vietnam is that people are super friendly. The internet speeds here are insanely fast. I could upload a two gigabyte file to YouTube in like five minutes. It's super cocoa modern. It's not people just wearing rice paddy hats. You see people driving around in Beamers and Bentleys. It's kind of insane. And in terms of places to travel in Vietnam, my favorite places include Hanoi. I really like going to Dalat, which is essentially where they grow all the coffee, great coffee, and also Saigon. So Vietnam is probably one of the most underrated places and you know, pretty much everyone speaks English and it's also very friendly to Westerners. And no, Vietnamese people don't hate Americans, whatever. They actually really like Americans and they're really open-minded. Great coffee, great food. And actually here in Saigon, some of the best international food, surprisingly. My favorite restaurant in Saigon, Chow Bella, the best Italian restaurant, the best dim sum restaurant, and pizza for peas. Like, I'm like low carb. The best pizza in the world, like fusion Japanese. Would you agree, Anna? Absolutely. I think it's... I'm not really much of a pizza person. Uh -huh. Americans don't hate me, but pizza for peace, oh man. Pizza for peace, it stands for pizza for peace, like it was for peace, but yeah, Vietnam is the place to be. All right, and question number four. Mm -hmm. How long would you recommend someone stay at a location to maximize their experiences? Oh, that's a really good question. So in terms of how long to stay at a foreign location, so, Another piece of advice I'd give myself is travel to fewer places, but spend more time in the locations. So if I even knew what I knew, not what I know now is, let's say you have two weeks to travel, two or three weeks, I would actually spend the whole two weeks or three weeks in just one city because it's better to stay in one city or location or neighborhood and get to know it very, very well than know lots of places superficially. So the mistake I made was when I was like 20, 21 years old, I was backpacking through Europe. I had about 30 days. I was just city hopping. I spent two days here, three days here, and I was so burnt out and exhausted because 
I was spending so much of my energy just packing and going from place to place. It never really, like first of all, all the places kind of blended together and I never became a local anywhere. I never really understood the culture. I never really had a chance to connect. And so like, you know, even coming to, um, to Japan, for example, a place I went to recently, which I really loved was Osaka. We only went to Osaka because Kyoto was too expensive during the cherry blossom season. So we ended up staying there for a month. And it was really nice because I started to understand more of the Osaka culture, the fact that there's a lot of Korean people who essentially went to Japan for cheap labor when Japan colonized Korea. And so I learned more about that culture. I learned about motsunabe, which is like this innards, amazing yuzu kosho sauce. And I got to go to the same restaurants, same coffee shops and actually make friends with the people. And it's even funny, like we're back here in Saigon. We went back to one of the coffee shops called the Workshop Coffee Shop, Workshop Cafe. And some of the kids from a year or two ago remember me still. Cause they're like, oh, there's that like super friendly Korean guy who knows how to speak Viet. And so I would actually recommend if it's your first tra time traveling outside the country or first time going on a trip, I would actually try to maximize your whole time in just one location or one city or one neighborhood. All right, uh, let's do last question number five. Question number five, okay. All right. What would you say to someone who is on the fence about traveling for the first time? Okay, so first and foremost, uh, this is, and this is just advice I wish I could give myself, is especially if you've never traveled before, of course, like, it's a little bit scary because everything's a little bit uncertain, but it's insane now. Like in today's world, we all have smartphones. We have Google maps. It's so easy to get an international SIM anywhere in the world. So you're going to have data anywhere you go. And even like any somewhat developed city you go to, there's freaking Wi-Fi everywhere. Like even in Vietnam, people are, oh, you know, like think about people with rice paddy hats. Their Wi-Fi is seriously like at least 200 times faster than anything at Starbucks in the States. And so there's really nothing to be scared of in a practical sense. And also, I mean, the thing that kind of sucks, but I guess it's kind of good too. Almost like everyone speaks English now. You'll find a Starbucks or a McDonald's anywhere. So the rest of the world is actually more similar than dissimilar. And don't be afraid of not packing all the stuff you need because you go to a foreign city, like you're in Saigon or Hanoi, or whatever. They have freaking Nike stores. They have Adidas stores. They have like, you know, all these electronic stores. Even in Vietnam, you could just, even if you lost or broke your iPhone or someone stole it, you can just go to any cell phone store and pick up a new iPhone X or whatever. So realize that most of the rest of the world is, has all the modern conveniences and functions that you'd expect back home. So there's almost no reason not to travel. And ultimately for me, traveling, it's so essential because it gets you outside your comfort zone. It forces you to challenge your own cultural beliefs. It makes you realize that the world is such a huge place. And, and this is actually a nice thing. It makes me realize how small and insignificant I am, but that actually makes me less scared of living my life because it allows me to take more risks. And I don't think the point is to just keep traveling for the rest of your life, but I think every once in a while, like, you know, a few times a year or even once a year, doing a big trip is quite essential because two things, first of all, being pushed a little bit outside your comfort zone, I think it's good for you to come up with creative new thoughts and ideas. And secondly, when you come back home, you actually appreciate home so much more. Like even for myself, I love Vietnam and love traveling abroad and living nomadically. But whenever I go back to LA or go back to California, so grateful to have Mexican food, so grateful to have In-N-Out, so grateful to have all of my friends and family back home. And even though there's a lot of things that people don't love Amer about America, myself included, it actually makes me more grateful to be an American, for me to be more grateful about things I, I do appreciate back home. So travel as a way to appreciate other places and also appreciate home so much more. And yeah, I think if you travel, regardless of where you go, even if it's somewhere close, like even doing a day trip somewhere else, just going on a road trip, I think you'll learn a lot more about yourself and what you have want out of life. All right, uh, awesome interview. Yeah. Uh, and uh, YouTube watchers, uh, why don't you guys leave comments down below about your tips or something that you'd like to share with the community? 
that you learned through traveling. Oh yeah, and uh, also go to the Air Kim forum, just Google Air Kim forum or just go to forum.airkimphotography.com. And yeah, share some of your own travel photography tips, share some of your own photos. And yeah, we would love to hear from you because of course there's no right or wrong way to travel. And essentially, I'm sure you have lots of travel hacks or experiences or even your favorite places to shoot street photography around the world. Leave a comment below and also uh, just to promote, we're working on a book called Travel Notes. Imagine street notes like a small pocketbook except it's your companion when you travel. It's gonna drop soon. Just subscribe to Eric Kim newsletter or just stay updated on this YouTube channel. I'll make some videos once it's live. But it's going to be an amazing book that will encourage you to travel more and give you lots more travel hacks. All right? Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.